Director and Executive Committee Member of the California Assessors Association and an active member of the International Association of Assessing Officers and the Society of Auditor Appraisers. Assessor Jeff Prang lives in Baldwin Hills with his husband, Ray Viscara, who is Director at Redondo Union High School. Please join me in welcoming LA County Assessor Jeff Prang. Thank you so much for that uh, very um, kind uh, in introduction. Um, it's great to be with you. I want to thank uh, uh, Stuart as well for uh, inviting me to uh, participate in today's uh, uh, program. I know what you're all probably thinking that uh, the best way to add a little bit of excitement into this newsmaker co connection is to hear us the county property tax assessor. So I always like to begin my remarks by explaining um, what the assessor does, uh, but also importantly, what the assessor does not do. I do not collect taxes. There is another guy who does that. He's got a very intuitive title. He's called the tax collector. Uh, I'm often called the tax assessor, There's, uh, which is conflation of these two separate agencies. There is no such thing as a tax assessor. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, as the assessor, I'm one of three countywide elected officials. The other two are much better known. Um, and based on what we're reading in the newspaper, that could be for better or worse, but the other two are the sheriff and the district attorney. And uh, as Samara has said that uh, uh, I run the largest uh, local property assessment agency in the United States. We're located in uh, six different locations throughout the county. We're responsible for establishing the value for over two and a half million real property and business assessments, uh, which last year were valued at $1.8 trillion. Uh, last year, property tax revenues that begin with the uh, valuation that my office uh, provides, uh, provided over $17 billion in, in, dollars in revenue for vital public services, such as public health and hospitals, parks, libraries, roads, public safety, et cetera. Um, and as you can imagine, due to COVID, where a lot of traditional sources of revenue from sales tax or tourism and even parking fines have, have declined, property tax is uh, more important as a, as a foundation to uh, sustaining those services. But in addition to um, real property, which obviously includes land and improvements, I'm also responsible for assessing the value of what's known as business personal property, which includes furniture, equipment, and machinery. And by the way, that also includes aircraft, including commercial and general aviation aircraft, mobile homes, boats, and believe it or not, even racehorses. So if you own our um, manager of business, you're very likely uh, familiar with the uh, annual filing of um, a form called the 571L, also known as the business property statement. They're due on April 1st and become delinquent on May 7th. And we all know that a lot of small businesses in particular have been hit especially hard by COVID-19. In fact, uh, some of our recent data shows that as of April 28th, small business revenue in the county had decreased by over 30% compared to January of 2020. Um, my office has been proactively reviewing those businesses which have been hardest hit by the pandemic and over 47,000 small businesses have received a proactive reduction in their personal property assessment to reflect the impacts of COVID because a lot of small businesses like a restaurant, if they're not operating, um, they shouldn't have to pay taxes on that equipment that don't, would be uh, uh, used under normal operations. The reductions we've granted in assessments thus far have totaled nearly $210 million in assessed value. Even if your business did not receive a proactive reduction, it's also important to note that you can file what's called a decline in value application if you think your property has uh, uh, been negatively impacted. This applies to both real property as well as um, a business property, business personal property. Um, and what we do know is that commercial property has been uh, negatively impacted due to COVID. Um, so what a, dec a decline in value, what that means is uh, that the current market value of your property is less than the current assessed value of your property as of January 1st. And so if you think your property, uh, real or business property warrants a review, due to a decline in market, you can file an application with us. Um, this is not, this is probably not true for your residential property since home prices have actually gone up rather sharply over 15% uh, this past year. Um, but if you own a business, you may be eligible for a temporary reduction in assessed value, which will uh, benefit your property tax bill. The filing period for decline value review opens on July 2nd and closes November 30th. 
Um, in addition to the decline in value form, my, my website offers a lot of additional to tools that are easy to access. Under the media tab, we actually posted a webinar explaining how to complete the business property statement. And we also recently added a, uh, um, a chat bot uh, uh, that is available 24 hour, 24 seven that can answer questions about programs we administer. Um, another big issue I want to address deals with new construction. I get a lot of inquiries about, uh, uh, about whether uh, remodeling projects will trigger a reassessment of your property. Um, most consider new construction as building a new structure or adding on to an existing one. Uh, but under California property tax law, new construction can also mean renovating a structure to change its use, rehabilitating a structure to a like new condition or even removing a structure uh, could be reassessable. So as you can see on the chart on your screen, it shows how the property tax system works and what leads to a reassessment. This also applies to new construction. And it begins with the city issuing a building permit which they by office, we next appraise the value of the new construction. The auditor controller applies the appropriate tax rate and the treasurer tax collector handles the billings and collections. As a property owner, uh, if you're doing construction, you may receive a, a letter from my office asking for more information about the construction you're doing. It is essential that you respond to those. Unfortunately, we find a lot of the time, uh, we don't receive responses to these requests and what happens then, because I am legally required to enter a value, we make an educated guess based on best available information. And this very often is not in the property owner's favor. Um, and then you'll have to file an appeal, you'll have to pay the disputed uh, 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 taxes, which can take months to uh, and sometimes years to resolve. So I always like to emphasize that if you receive a request for more information from my office, please respond to help us make an accurate assessment. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with some really un undesirable bureaucracy. Um, next topic I want to talk about is something that's a, a, a current policy issue, and that is uh, Proposition 19. Um, you may recall Prop 19 was passed by the voters last November. Um, it, is a, it's an amendment to uh, uh, the Property Tax Administration under Prop 13. Uh, it had a very aggressive, and I would argue unreasonable, implementation date of April the 1st. And this has caused significant administrative uh, challenges for assessors statewide. For those of you who don't know, there are two major components to Prop 19. One is there's a benefit for seniors and the disabled that allows them to transfer their property tax base with them when they sell one home and purchase a new one. And then the other one deals with uh, 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 intergenerational transfers between parents and children, and in some cases, parents and grandchildren. Um, last year during the, uh, the campaign, we devoted a lot of our time and attention to Prop 15, the split role, um, which frankly would have simply overwhelmed assessor operations for years. And you may recall Prop 19 would have uh, 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 split the assessment role where commercial industrial property would be reassessed at uh, uh, market rates at least every three years. Uh, Prop 19, while we monitored that, it was seen as a lesser concern and didn't consume a great deal of our attention. Um, I know that BICA had major concerns with Prop 15 as well, and I wanted to let you know that we are uh, continuing to monitor legislation that would revive a split role uh, discussion. But similarly uh, to Prop 15, the authors of Prop 19 did not consult with assessors who are the primary administrators of this type of uh, measure. And as a result, the measure that was adopted by the voters is uh, it's full of uh, deficiencies, inconsistencies, and ambiguities. The, um, the family transfer component also is creating a great deal of concern. Um, this component was not discussed very much. It was not well understood during the campaign. But what it does is it significantly reduces the tax benefits for families that existed under the previous law, which was known as Prop 58. Now under Prop uh, 19, in order to qualify for one of these intergenerational transfers, a couple of conditions need to be met. So uh, the only... The property to be inherited by your child or grandchild can only be your primary residence. No other property now qualifies uh, for uh, the tax benefits. Uh, the previous law allowed you to transfer your primary residence plus up to a million dollars in additional real estate without reassessment. Um, secondly, your child or grandchild must make that home their primary residence within one year of the transfer. And they've also got to file for the homeless exemption. There are um, potential uh, uh, 
tax uh, property tax impacts due to Prop 19. Um, the uh, uh, inherited base uh, year assessed value is now subject to an increase depending on the value of the property. And the rule of thumb is that if your home is worth less than a million dollars, your child can inherit it and the tax base without a reassessment. But once it hits the one million dollar mark, your children will get uh, we can inherit the property, but they'll get a tax increase on the home they inherit as well. Um, and as I stated, Prop 58 uh, previously allowed up to a million dollars of property to be transferred without reassessment. One of the things we're uh, uh, coming in contact with is some parents, maybe they had three rental homes and three children. They were hoping to give one to each child um, without reassessment. But now that's uh, uh, only the, the primary residence qualifies uh, for that, uh, that provision. Um, on the plus side, Prop 19 did increase benefits for those who are 55 or older, severely disabled, or the victim of a natural disasters, such as the recent fires uh, that we've had. Prop 19 allows eligible homeowners to uh, transfer their base year value anywhere in the state. Under the previous law, it could only be in one of 10 participating counties. And you can transfer your base year up to three times. And that's a, a, a positive development. Uh, but as a whole, Prop 19 still requires a great deal of work. What we what we really need right now is implementing le uh, legislation that will help us to interpret the intent of the uh, of the measure. I'm serving this year as the chair of the California Assessors Association Legislative Committee, and I can tell you it is all Prop 19 all the time. It feels like it's a full time job. Uh, we're, uh, there is legislation that will. Uh, hopefully uh, address a lot of the inconsistencies in the law, Senate Bill 539 by Senator Hertzberg. Um, we're hoping that he will amend it to include all the uh, ministerial and administrative needs that assessors have to fairly uh, administer the law. But as, as of now, we don't have, a, have that bill and it could be several months before it's adopted. And the challenge we're having is the measures already affect. So there's transactions taking place, people are looking for guidance and, uh, and we simply don't have it. Um, another challenge from Prop 19 is the more abbreviated deadlines for applying for this uh, uh, benefit. Um, as it relates to estate planning, one of the biggest challenges we face from the public is that members of the public are simply aware, unaware of what they need to do when a loved one passes. Generally speaking, if, if there's a, a property to be inherited, you need to do two things. You need to file a change in ownership, death of real property owner form within 150 days with my office. And then you need to file the, the, the Prop 19. Unfortunately, almost nobody knows they have to do that. Um, it's not uncommon for, for uh, uh, people who inherit property to uh, learn that the property has been reassessed once they get a supplemental tax bill. And in almost all cases, it's because they didn't file the proper forms uh, with my office. Um, unlike Prop 58, we had up to three years to do this. Under Prop 19, you have 12 months. Um, it's really gonna be, a, and, and there is no wiggle room. Um, uh, to uh, make allowances for, for those types of oversight. Uh, to help people understand Prop 19, we did uh, develop a special page on my website uh, dedicated to Prop 19. There's a lot of information and tools um, to uh, help folks navigate the, the, the measure to the degree that we understand it. There's a couple of uh, tools that will help you know what the new tax rate would be if you're transferring your base year to a more expensive home or to your children. It'll help you determine what the new uh, property tax basis would be. Um, another big issue I wanted to address deals with change in ownerships as it relates to trusts. Um, and Prop 19 has also increased the volume of inquiries as it relates to trusts and what constitutes a change in ownership. Um, so when a publicly recorded transfer occurs, uh, uh, when we say transfer, that's what we mean buying and selling. Uh, you get a copy of the deed and we determine whether the uh, reassessment is required under the law. And if, it, if, if required, an appraisal is made to determine the new market value of the property. And then upon notification of the new assessment, the property owner can appeal that if they, uh, if they choose. Uh, but when it comes to transferring property, a lot of folks believe if, the, if it's in a trust, they're protected from reassessment, and that is not the case. Uh, while trusts are a bit valuable for estate planning, they really are just a set of instructions for what will happen uh, with that property. Um, their precision instruments and even minor errors can result in a reassessment and a supplemental tax bill. It's important to consult attorneys or uh, state planning attorneys or CPAs or other professionals uh, when dealing with a trust. And then uh, before we close and move on to Q&A, I just want to give you a quick update on the, uh, uh, the market and the assessment role. 
as you may or may not know, my primary job is the production of the annual assessment roll, which is essentially the inventory of all taxable property in the county. Last year, the uh, property values countywide grew at 5.97%, the 10th consecutive year of property value growth in the county since the uh, recession of 2008. Uh, we, are, uh, we work on a fiscal year, so we will close the current assessment roll at the end of June. We're currently estimating that the, that the uh, growth of property values in the county uh, will be at approximately three and a half to four percent. And given the impact on the economy over the past year, we think that's exceptional. Um, last time, back in the 2008 um, uh, recession, we actually had negative growth. Factors contributing to the uh, uh, forecast include a lower um, cost of living adjustment under Prop 13. As you know, that Prop, uh, Prop 13 allows a maximum of two percent increase to the assessed value. This year, it will only be one percent. Uh, business personal property is showing negative growth, um, as I had uh, indicated earlier, because of the number of businesses that were closed. Um, however, the, uh, the buying and selling property still remains relatively strong and uh, is going to result in a positive uh, uh, growth number this year. There's also been massive amounts of uh, new construction of all types in San Fernando Valley, which will continue to solidify the valley as a major contributor to uh, LA as an economic powerhouse. Just a couple of examples, uh, the former uh, LA Times printing plant property is being developed as mixed use uh, apartments, office and retail and restaurant that's gonna provide 660 units of housing. Uh, Westfield Topanga has driven a lot of commerce in the West Valley and construction is now underway to convert the former um, 160,000 square foot Sears department store into a two store dining and entertainment complex. In addition to new construction, the residential real estate market uh, has performed fairly well. LA County median sales price for a single family residence uh, increased over 15% to an all time high of $775,000 back in April. Some areas of the Valley have seen large increases in median sales price. Um, it varies uh, neighborhood, neighborhood by neighborhood. As you uh, can see in the chart um, uh, on the screen, the entire, uh, the, all the areas we've highlighted uh, exceed the county um, uh, median sales price of 775,000. Um, this is uh, due to two, largely due to two factors. One was this, uh, the inventory was greatly reduced during COVID, uh, putting a great deal of demand on those that were um, the properties that were being sold and the historically low mortgage rates. So um, I think I've covered a lot of, uh, a lot of material. Um, I'm going to stop here and I uh, uh, do appreciate the opportunity to share this information. Hope you uh, learned something a little bit more about my office and what we do. And I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have. All right, thank you for your presentation. Um, so we will move on to the Q&A portion of our event. Uh, I'm gonna read some of the questions that folks have already submitted and so members, um, again, please feel free to type your questions into the Q&A section, or you can click on the raise hand button next to your name. So the first question is, uh, what long-term effects do you think uh, the COVID-19 crisis will have on residential and business property value? Well, I believe that as we move out of, uh, out of COVID, residential will There'll, there'll be some um, resettling of the residential pro property values. Right now, they're moving; they're they're very very high due to the lack of uh, inventory. As inventory becomes more available, um, it remains to be seen whether the historic highs in median sales price will hold. We are monitoring what's going on with commercial properties very very closely. There's a couple things that uh, are uh, are noteworthy. One is um, uh, office space. The, we, over the last 15 months, as um, uh, a lot of uh, businesses move their employees to a telework environment. Um, some of these businesses, which leased uh, uh, Class A office spaces downtown, for instance, are finding that, that the telework environment wor is working for them and they may not want to come back to uh, come back to their offices, at least not with the same profile that they did prior to, uh, to COVID. So we could see a, um, uh, a surplus of office space over the next couple of years, we could see some downward pressure on the, uh, uh, the values of, of commercial properties. Same thing with um, uh, not just office space, but any uh, commercial businesses that own, that, uh, that lease to um, retail and restaurant where the, those businesses have been negatively impacted. 
we think it's going to be a, a couple of years of, uh, of resettling before we have a good good assessment of what the uh, uh, what the market will uh, will dictate. Um, hotels have been particularly um, hit hard. We're already um, proactively reducing the assessed value of some uh, hotel and hospitality um, properties. And again, as I said, that the uh, business personal property uh, for the first time since Prop 13 was uh, adopted uh, resulted in a reduction. You know, um, I, just a quick disclaimer, I'm having some work done at my house, so if you do hear some noise, my apologies ahead of time. Uh, so the second question, uh, due to the significant economic impact of the past year, are city, county, and state tax to help support families and business owners, perhaps at discounted rates or reductions? I have not heard of anything. Unfortunately, uh, when it comes to property taxes, that's all governed by uh, prop 13 which is a which is article 13 of the uh, of the constitution i think to make any adjustments to that would uh, having not really thought about all the different policy options that might be available it could require constitutional action um but i've not um out of sacramento the only thing i'm hearing is that there's a number of proposals to increase taxes in different areas i've not heard about uh, any discussion about providing um property tax relief. The, there is property tax, as I discussed previously, there is property tax relief available to businesses where the um, market value has been impacted um, to the property, but it has to be, the market value has to be less than the uh, assessed value in order to get that property tax relief. And we are actually, uh, we are, um, everybody has the, the, uh, the, the right to file for a decline in, uh, decline in value review or for an assessment appeal, but we are also proactively looking at those parts of the county, those regions, those uh, business profiles that we think are likely to be impacted, and we will proactively provide property tax relief where we think it's warranted. Oh my God. Uh, the next, you mentioned it previously before about businesses closing, but uh, it seems like many businesses are going to move out of LA, or like you said before, closing down or downsizing, what impacts will that have? So if there is a, um, an, a, a significant exodus from LA, uh, I think that will have downward pressure on, uh, on, on property values. So um, it's going to be my office is very, very busy trying to keep up with those trends. It means that uh, it, it could be beneficial, it could be beneficial to, uh, uh, to, to rents, it could mean some properties which were really um, selling at the uh, at market highs could begin to uh, uh, move in a downward direction. Still too still too early to tell, but uh, but there's a lot of indications that those are the sort of uh, uh, things that could occur. Right. Okay. A um, couple more. Is the assessor's office going to continue to work remotely or some hybrid uh, model? So we're likely in the short term to move into a hybrid model. I am very eager to get our public counters back open so people can access our offices. A lot of times it's, it's difficult to uh, just do business over the phone because sometimes you need to see maps and diagrams and, uh, and, and, and documents in, in, uh, in, in real life. Um, I think that all government, not just the assessor's office, but I think all departments in the county are evaluating um, uh, teleworking teleworking options. I know that uh, Supervisor Han is a real strong proponent of uh, uh, moving to a, more of a teleworking environment. Uh, it will be difficult. One of the challenges that we'll have in having a, a anything other than a hybrid is that um, our appraisers, you know, appraisers are they're, they're journeymen. It's a it's a profession where you learn from more senior members. It requires a lot of personal interaction in order to learn the trade. Um, so our junior people are gonna to need to be in the office um, much more regularly than senior uh, veteran appraisers um, in order to uh, uh, develop that knowledge base and experience. The last question here um, in the chat, in the Q&A section, there has been a recurrent effort to enact a split roll tax. What are your thoughts on that? So, um, I'm not hearing anything new about the split role. Obviously it went down to defeat last time. 
I've heard a little bit of rumblings that they're looking for another, um, uh, to take another bite at the apple, if you will. Um, I have a, 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 couple, a couple of thoughts. You know, we Assessors were not really, the, were never really included in the discussion by the authors of Prop 15. We could have offered them a lot of information that would have mitigated a lot of the challenges that they were proposing. Uh, there's a few things that I think they should uh, consider as an alternative. One of the uh, challenges uh, under the existing law deals with legal, own, legal entity uh, ownership of property. And um, a lot of you are familiar with the example of the Fairmont Hotel in Santa Monica, and I'll use that to, as, a, as an analogy. So um, Fairmont Hotel 15, 20 years ago was for sale. It was valued about $80 million. The market value of the property was about a quarter billion dollars. And uh, it was the, the new purchaser, um, didn't want to uh, purchase that property and have a tripling of the property taxes. So they assembled a limited liability corporation with a number of owners who each owned a minority share um, and, the, uh, and they purchased the property. And even though 100% control of that property changed hands, existing law says that 50% ownership must change before there is a reassessable event. Um, and I think most people would, would argue that that's inequitable. Prop 13 was not intended to help you evade uh, taxation. It was intended to stabilize property taxes. Um, this, is, this type of legal entity transfer is really uh, almost exclusively uh, the, the purview of, uh, of corporate interests, and it's created inequity in the system. And we could, uh, we, they could close that loophole and create more of an equitable system between residential and commercial properties. And I think that's something worth exploring. Even the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association has indicated that that's a, a legal loophole that should, should be uh, evaluated. Um, the, um, I'm not, uh, um, had the opportunity to speak with the, uh, the proponents in the past, um, but I, I believe they have, one of the reasons they've not pursued that avenue is because they're much more interested in a more global change to the uh, uh, Prop 13 system. All right, we have a couple more, a few more that came in. You have some time still, Assessor? Sure. Okay, all right, so the next one is, uh, what impacts do you think the recent decline in California's population will have on property values? From what I've seen in terms of the, the, the reduction, it's a st fairly statistically insignificant reduction. Um, I don't think it's gonna have any short-term uh, imp impact. Um, I think we'd have to see a whole lot more uh, uh, reduction in, in population before, um, uh, it has a has an in, impact, but we are at a point. You know, property values are ex, are extremely high. It's really difficult, as I as I stated previously, with a median sales price of a uh, of, of a home in the county at seven hundred seventy five thousand dollars. It's more and more unaffordable to uh, uh, to live here, and, it's, and those incredibly high rates are going to be unsustainable long term. How that will play out is. Uh, um, I guess is a, a matter of speculation, but I think uh, the, as it relates to population, I think it's still a little bit premature to speculate what's, what's going to, uh, to occur. All right, the next automated or manual are your team's processes and how do citizens file requests for things such as uh, decline in value requests, uh, fill out a paper form and submit com a, a capable website, or a, sorry, website. So when I, when I first was elected back in 2014, um, I inherited, um, and some of you have heard me discuss this before, I inherited this 1970s era, you know, mainframe, green screen, DOS-based technology platform. Um, and as an aside, uh, sometimes when we're talking about other government agencies, whether it be Department of Motor Vehicles or the uh, uh, unemployment office, some of the reasons they have such significant inefficiencies is because a lot of government agencies are still dealing with old mainframe systems, things that you just don't run into anymore in the uh, uh, in, in private private business. Um, but we were back like in 2014. We were still on a mainframe. We still uh, we were still essentially a paper based organization. The two and a half million uh, property uh, uh, parcels that we uh, are responsible for were still each associated with a paper file. Um, I uh, uh, embarked on a, uh, a, a program to upgrade our technology platform. Uh, we're, we're in the last phase of that, uh, of that program. It's going to end up being about a $100 million um, 
program. We've digitized all of our files. Uh, we've upgraded our in internal systems. We're no longer on the, uh, on the mainframe. It's increased our efficiency. It's increased our uh, outward uh, facing um, platform. So if you go to my website, there's that we have, it's available publicly, it's now available on our website. Things that used to take sometimes hours or days to get a response to can be, uh, uh, can be answered quickly. And um, it's, a, uh, it's and, and the methodology and how we're developing this uh, platform is kind of unusual in government. Uh, we're building it on an um, a agile approach as, a, as opposed to the typical government uh, um, approach to uh, you know, design, bid, bid, build, like they, like they would build a bridge. And so um, it's gonna be a much more robust system when completed for, uh, for property owners to access. There's a lot of our, uh, our forms that, still, that you can now get the forms online. A lot of them still require wet signatures. We're going to require legislation and or authorization from the Board of Equalization to allow electronic signatures on a lot of those, but that is our, our, our objective. And by next year at this time, a lot of these paper-based uh, um, functions will be able to be done um, electronically. And um, one of the uh, uh, elements of this of, of these upgrades I'm most proud of is that our inquiries, our telephone and email inquiries have been stable for the last couple of years, uh, which is an indication that uh, property owners are able to get the information for themselves on our, um, on our assessor portal, which are our property database, or from our, our website, and they don't require um, interacting with uh, personnel anymore to get the answers that they need. Thank you. Yes, I do remember the green screen. My company, we used it for such a long time and it was antiquated, but luckily we've changed since. So understand that. All right. The next one regarding Prop 19, where can I find out what my new assessed value is if we to our children? So go to my website, which is assessor.lacounty.gov. There is a Prop 19 um, uh, page and there's a uh, uh, I don't have the screen in front of me, but there should be something that says tools. And they're looking for parent to chance, parent to child intergenerational transfer calculator. And all you need is the property address or the assessor's identification number and the uh, estimated uh, market value of the property. And it will then tell you what the new uh, tax base would be. Very simple. Same thing, you. If you're your, same thing if you're a senior citizen and transferring your base year to a more expensive home. Uh, Calculator works the same way. It'll tell you what your new adjusted tax base would be. Okay, and I know you touched on this a little bit, but another question came up about a temporary tax reduction. So would it be possible to get that as a result of the COVID-19 impacts to the business community? It, it all has to do with the, uh, um, with the value of your property. So if, you're, if you purchased your property for, uh, let's say for a million dollars, then over the years, it increased in value to $2 million. The market value of property is $2 million, but the assessed value of your property is $1 million. So if during COVID, the $2 million market value falls down to, let's say, $800,000, you would be entitled to temporary property tax relief. But if your $2 million market value falls to $1.5 million, you would not because the $1.5 million is still greater than the assessed value of $1 million. It's a little bit simplistic, but that's essentially how it works. The market, the assessed value of your property, which is what you pay taxes on, um, is the uh, is the uh, uh, the baseline that we look at uh, and compare to the current market value of the property. All right. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions for the assessor, Kathy? Help me uh, see if there are any hands up on the on the system here. I'll give it a couple more seconds. Let's check the chat real quickly here. All right, no hands. Okay, well, that's much for joining us today. Um, let's all thank the assessor for, for joining us and giving us such great, wonderful information um, regarding all things uh, assessor's office. So we appreciate you uh, joining our group today. Thank you so much. Good to see so many friends on the uh, on the uh, on the call. So we get a chance to uh, uh, chat with everybody. But look forward to coming back sometime in the future to uh, give you an update. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. You too.